The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Was there ever a more fundamental statement as to how the nature of our existence in the world as Christians changed with this event of the Incarnation? The law was all there was. Everything had a definition, a role, a requirement, a procedure, a prohibition, or a permission. Then all of a sudden, things changed. Fundamentally, they changed. There was the law. Now, there was grace and truth. Grace in that God came among us to bring us salvation we did not deserve. Truth in bringing fulfillment to all that had come before, the new being that went beyond the law, to open us to God's true message of love. A new commandment I give you, that you love one another. In a way, we see this played out in the dichotomy of the Old Testament and the New Testament. Consider this word, grace. There are only a handful of instances of this word in the Old Testament. None of them is really qualified as a reference to God's grace. Indeed, even in the Gospels, it's barely mentioned until we get to this first chapter of John and we hear the message of grace coming from God. But after that, beginning with the Acts of the Apostles and on through the Epistles, it's like the grace of God is about me. It takes center stage. <clears throat> How often do we hear Paul open an epistle with these are similar words? Grace to you and peace from God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. And then to close, he might say, May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you and your spirit, brothers and sisters. Grace. We need to believe that this is the world we are born into, the world of grace, not the world of hate and division or law and consequences, selfishness and animosity, a world of <coughs> grace, truth, and love. I think it is easy for us sometimes to overlook the fact that with the coming of Jesus, there was indeed as well the coming of grace. And that before that, grace, as we know it as Christians, did not exist. Grace came through Jesus Christ. Because Jesus came among us, grace as well came among us. We perhaps think a lot about redemption, salvation, coming through Jesus and his death and resurrection. But redemption and salvation have their foundation in God's grace. We are not saved and redeemed because Jesus came and showed us a way to live that would allow us to follow the law in a way that had never been done before. All of a sudden, we were going to become holier than thou. And we were back. Didn't happen. Instead, we received grace. A grace that before Jesus came and brought it into the world did not exist, or if you want to get technical, perhaps it did exist, and we just didn't know. The world didn't know that grace was there. After all, we read that in the beginning was the word. The word has always existed, and so in that sense, grace has always existed. It was just not in this world in a way that we would understand it until it was revealed by Jesus. So through Jesus coming into the world, we came to know and understand the grace of God. Well, great, Roger, isn't that wonderful? Some amorphous theological concept that we're all supposed to be warm and fuzzy about. Grace. When Jesus came, grace. Before Jesus, we didn't have grace. I get it. So what does that mean? <clears throat> I'm saved by the grace of God. I see the grand concept in John's lesson this morning. The ultimate grace of God in offering his son for our salvation. So how does that play 
way out for me? Is this something that I can grab a hold of? Forget spending Christmas looking for the Christ child. Where is Christ? And in case you're wondering, I don't mean the young middle schooler that's in the library and cats next to me. <laughs> but that's not far off. I went to the 4 p.m. Christmas service at St. Peter's 50 Roll in Helena, Montana. That was their family service, and their first part of the service was their Christmas magic. And I sat there, and I watched these little children parade up in their costumes and take their place. And I knew about them, by the way. And we sang all those familiar passing hymns, Away in the Manger, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, Angels We Have Heard on Time. And I looked out at those children. And their moms and dads and grandparents and grandmas and grandpas, older brothers and sisters, cousins, God knows who all. And I saw this endless joy. And I thought to myself, this is grace. This is indeed the grace of God. And then a little further in the pageant, we all sang silent night. And I thought again of how this most beloved Christmas carols came into being. Words by a priest in solitude overlooking a quiet village. Music by a school teacher and part-time choir director playing on a guitar with only three chords. And I thought, this is grace. This is indeed the grace of God. And I thought of homeless being fed in volunteer kitchens and toys gathered for less fortunate children, families united over great distances, and people all over the world who hold to Christian values, whether they're Christian or not. And I thought, this is the grace of God. And why is it grace? Because it is a gift freely given by God, something that we would not have except that Jesus came to be among us human form, and with that came grace. Grace in so many forms, uplifting music, inspired words, acts of human kindness, overpowering love, things as simple as holding your first grandchild for the first time. So here we are, uh -huh. by the grace of God. A grace that is perhaps more than you thought it was. A grace that has given more to the world than we can ever begin to imagine. A grace that, but were we to look around, we would see overwhelmed by its omnipresence. And yet the question remains, do we see it? We have so much from God, and it is all for you. Until Jesus came to be among us, we never realized that it was this wonderful thing called grace. We only had the law. We had to do what was right to be good. Grace? Who knew what that was? Yet I believe it was always among us. Gift from God, salvation from God, the love of God overcoming the world. And we embrace those things as we then freely give to those around us in the world, whether in song, or words, or physical gifts, or food, or comfort, or simply sharing a smile. With all of those things, we embrace the grace of God and make it manifest so that others see it as 